tape doesn't lie. President Trump trying to rewrite history as the backlash grows over the racist send her back chant at his rally directed at Congresswoman Ilan Omar. The president now insisting he didn't like it. When your supporters last night were chanting, chanting, send her back, why didn't you stop them? Why didn't you ask them to stop saying that? Well, number one, I, I think I did. I started speaking very quickly. It, it really was a loud, I disagree with it, by the way, but it was quite a chant. And uh, I felt a little bit badly about it. But I will say this, uh, I did, and I started speaking very quickly. But you'll stop they, them if they try to do it again. Well, I didn't like that they did it, and I started speaking very quickly. I started very quickly. Very, very quickly. That is contradicted by the video. Just watch. Omar has a history of launching vicious anti-Semitic screeds. And she talked about the evil Israel, and it's all about the Benjamins. Not a good thing to say. 13 seconds that chant went on, and the president didn't stop it, seemed to soak it in. That's not speaking very quickly at all. That's letting them finish before you continue on your attack. And if the president would like to know how you shut down a racist remark that might happen at a rally or at any presidential event, this is how you do it. I can't trust Obama. I, I have read about him, and he's not, he's not, he's a, um, he's an Arab. He is not. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, 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 ma'am. He's a, he's a, he's a decent family man, citizen that I just happen to have disagreements with on, on fundamental issues, and that's what this campaign is all about. He's not. Thank you. So there is that. But no matter what the president says today, let's be clear about one thing. This didn't start last night. That chant clearly didn't come out of thin air. It started with his tweet four days ago. They got the chant from the president. It's also noteworthy the president has tried this before. And I'm talking about the last rallying cry from his rallies, lock her up. Well, here he is in 2016. When I started talking about Hillary Clinton, the veterans who saw her 24 hours before started screaming, lock her up, lock her up, lock her up. And I said, don't do that. Now, I didn't do that for any reason. I really, I didn't like it. And they stopped. They really did not, as we well know, because that chant is still happening. In fact, it just happened at his rally in Florida last month. See him stopping him there? We've been here before. So it is somewhat hard to believe that the, pre the, believe the president when he says he's suddenly offended by this chant at his rallies now. Pamela Brown is out front, live outside the White House for us. Pamela, why is the president trying to pretend that he tried to step in when he clearly didn't and did nothing when those chants continued? Well, Kate, after pressure from allies, uh, President Trump is now saying he disavows that send her back chant at his rally last night and made sure he claims that it didn't last long. But there's no going back because the video tells a different story, showing, as you point out, 13 seconds of the chant growing louder and louder as the president stood and listened before speaking again. Now, defenders note he didn't join in on the chant, but the president told the audience just minutes later, Kate, to tell the four progressive Democratic congresswomen to leave if they don't like him or the country. Now, the president, of course, could have come to the opinion he didn't like the chant upon reflection today. But we have learned that many people in this inner circle, including his daughter, Ivanka, expressed concern to, to the White House and to the president himself that the chant could come to define another dark and racially charged campaign. The president also, Kate, dismissing the idea that he himself set the stage for the chant with his racist tweet a few days ago that the four congresswomen dubbed the squad should go back to the crime infested countries where they came from. Now, we should note the women have made controversial statements in the past, including about Israel and immigration. And White House defenders, they are quick to refocus the conversation on exactly that, Kate, their politics, not their race, claiming that they're radical and socialist. And that could be a window into Trump's 2020 strategy to make the four women as the face of the Democratic Party. Yep. Take on people's positions all you want, but don't take, when you take them on, with, uh, on race, that's 
when you get into where he is right now. Thanks, Pamela. Appreciate it. Thank you. Up front with me tonight, Democratic Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence of Michigan. Congresswoman, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Kate. The president says that he wasn't happy with the chance at his rally last night. You heard Pam's great reporting. He said he disagrees with it. If he really is disavowing those and his own remarks, is that good enough for you? No, it's not. Uh, you know, listening to that crowd, and I have repeatedly told friends of mine, what scares me more right now in America is not so much Donald Trump, but the masses of people who seem empowered by his racist, his um, just really hateful comments, and people are just soaking that up. So when you look at history, being a black woman in America and knowing there was a time where they would have gatherings of people and lynch black people and it was considered a social event, knowing that the Nazis used to gather up human beings and murder them and people embraced that and cheered on those leaders. This is what's so scary about this. We are in a democracy. We have freedom of speech. We can engage in dialogue, and we should. This, this amazing democracy we have was not built on a Republican agenda or a Democratic mm -hmm. agenda. It was the two parties coming together, just ironing out their differences and producing some of the best laws and policies in the world. But when we start addressing people and, and, and using these racist comments, that's where the fear factor comes in. That's where this releasing of it's okay for you to attack another person. What does going back to another country, what are you saying? As a young black girl, I remember hearing those racist remarks on the playground, you monkey, go back to Africa. That is real. This is not a joke, and he may not like it, but what are you going to do about it, Mr. You, President? You, you mentioned, you said the masses. I want to play for you um, what the president said, kind of his message to his supporters would be, because he was asked today what his message is to his supporters who were chanting that last night. Let me play that for you. Well, these are people that love our country. I want them to keep loving our country. And I think the Congresswomen, by the way, uh, should be more positive than they are. What do you say to that? I say to that, if you love this country, then you love the diversity of it. You can't love America and not appreciate that the greatness of this country is based on this, this, this influence and, and, and the contributions of people from all over the world that came together to call this place home. So loving America does not mean that you exclude people. Loving America means that you embrace this democracy. And you know, I will say to anyone, you have the right to support Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. If you think his policies are one that will move this country forward, you have that right. And I do not demonize anyone to be in that stadium and say, that's my guy for president. But what I will say is that when you start chanting and embracing this thing of attacking and using racist rhetoric and laughing and cheering as if that is America, that is not America. And we must stand up against it. We cannot allow it. There's been some dark times in America, and we always stood up against it and stopped it and got us get this country back on track. One thing that has come out of this uh, this week and what's happened with the tweets and, and well, this was before the chance um, is the impeachment vote on the House floor. You were one of the 95 Democrats who voted in support of the impeachment proceedings that were voted on yes. yesterday against the president. 157 Democrats did not mm -hmm. vote with you on this. So did this effort backfire? I was sent to Congress to, to speak truth to power. I was sent to Congress not to join a club. I was sent there to represent the people and fight for the people. I am confronted daily of how this president has disregarded the laws and policies. I am on government oversight. We are conducting hearing after hearing after hearing. I have been confronted with a president who, who has broken so many rules we have criminal investigations. And why did 157 not, Democrats not vote with you on that? 
I will tell you where my vote was. It is time for us in America, like we have repeatedly for Democrats and re presidential, uh, Democrat and Republican presidents, that when we see this type of blatant disregard for rules and policy, that we begin an investigation. I continue to say that. I stand by that. And if this investigation does not find this president guilty, then he will be exonerated. But I cannot sit here. Knowing the oath of office and the Constitution that says this power rest in Congress. And I feel that we should go forward with the impeachment hearings. Congresswoman, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate the time. Thank you so much.